Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's threat snapshot. But first, a couple of housekeeping notes. We're changing up the way that we do videos on our channel about threat research. We're still going to deliver the threat snapshots, although maybe at a little bit slower pace, keeping them very topical and timely on new and emerging threats. On some of those off weeks, we're going to be covering some more established threats in our Adversaries Arsenal series. These are going to be more deep dives on specific adversary TTPs that are commonly used across their kill chains. You can see the first one that we had last week on scheduled tasks. It's also going to be varying some of the speakers here so you can get some different perspectives and different backgrounds, but ultimately we still want to provide the highest quality threat intelligence context you know, to our audience. So definitely stay tuned. So now without further ado, let's continue on with this week's snapshot. So there's a lot of CVEs that we've had this past month of October. I'm going to highlight two in this video, and then we're going to have a follow-up video with another two. Uh, first one we're going to talk about is um, from JetBrains CICD software called Team City. So if you're familiar or not familiar with CICD, Continuous Integration, Continuous Delivery Software, it might be something like GitLab, um, you know, other people use Jenkins. The goal of that is for software developers to be able to, again, store, manage code in some instances as like a repo, but also be able to, you know, process the builds and other, you know, items. So Team City offers a lot of those features. And again, the importance of, you know, why does it matter when your supply chain, I guess I'm leading it with this, why does it matter when your CID servers, you know, get compromised? And again, that's a supply chain hack. So if you think about, you know, the solar winds breach and how did, you know, some malicious code get into their software packages, you know, compromising a CID, CICD server is one way that you can do that. Um, other issues, you know, through this vulnerability is it's going to potentially expose the source code. So again, if an attacker can get in, can execute code, it's, you know, not a stretch of the imagination that they could pull down that information. Um, again, they can also inject code in there, and again, they can steal other information like secrets. Um, if you have CICD that's deploying to a production environment, you might be able to get authentication data to that production environment, and then you might be able to you know, expose customer data or other things. So uh, again, generally because CICD software is, again, used in this way, it can be on the internet, and um, this is where this can become very, very critical very quickly. So talking a little bit about that, I um, want to just do a quick highlight. So I know we've talked a lot about our partnership with Mandiant. Um, for all of our customers, we're bringing in intelligence powered by, again, Mandiant Advantage Threat Intelligence. So you can see that we've got vulnerability pages here. This is an example of those. We also have ones for threat actors, for malware tools, and for MITRE attack techniques. And this is a quick way to see if I wanted to learn about this CVE. Again, what's the CVSS score? You know, risk rating. We can say that this is um, com this has been exploited. It is exploited in the wild. It wasn't a zero day, um, and we can see other information about it, like this has been added to CIS's known exploited vulnerability catalog. Um, lots of great information here again for our customers, and where we add that value on top of this data is again we have our own threat intelligence. We have our library of threats demonstrating what that attack looks like, as well as the artifacts it leaves behind. And then we have detection opportunities that you can use to, again, fill those gaps. Obviously, with a CVE, we'd always recommend patching, but you know that's not always possible, or in some instances, you might miss some. And then we also have attack scripts, which you, you can use to then validate those deployed detections, make sure that you're you know, able to detect those properly, and really have that end-to-end -end testing. So that's really the goal of Snap Attack and what we're trying to bring here. So without further ado, let's dive into this Team City um, execution issue. So this is one of their RPC endpoints. Um, due to a way that they were processing the route with wildcards, it allowed authentication bypass. That one also did follow up to allow, um, again, remote code execution if you were requesting ones with um, using endpoints to get tokens, and then you could you know, really kind of compromise the host. So we've got a Windows host here. You can see we've got Team City installed in the background. Not a ton that's going to be going on on the victim machine. Um, I can just kind of pop ahead here and you can see nothing before, nothing after. So we're going to hop over to the Linux side here. Um, we're going to be using a Metasploit POC. I, there are some other proof of concept exploits available for this. And we're going to see when we um, configure launch, we'll run that exploit command here. 
um, this is going to go ahead. It's going to get that authentication token um, that's going to allow us to make configuration changes here. And then we can execute a payload um, with some living off the land techniques. And you can see we've got our shell. And again, because the CI/CD server is running as system, you know, we own everything on that host. And, you know, we also then theoretically own everything in that, um, you know, what's in that CI/CD server. So access to source code, access to, you know, secrets and other environment variables. So you can see that can be highly critical. How do I defend against this sort of thing? A um, couple of different ways that we can do it. We'll take a look at some detection opportunities here. So um, again, with these sort of things where there's remote code execution, it's always interesting to look at, again, your parent-child relationships. So we can look to see specifically if, you know, Java or if, you know, the Team City um, software, you can see here this, the Team City bin, um, we're looking for suspic suspicious processes like CMDs, like PowerShells, other things of that nature. Um, again, that is a, a very good technique. Um, you can use this very specific if you're looking for Team City on their files. You can also have more evergreen detections for this, which we'll talk about too. Um, another opportunity with this, and again, depending on how it's set up, you may not have as much you know, telemetry data on that server. So um, network detections, again, if you have you know, bro Zeek data, if you've got proxy logs and you can see um, what sort of requests are going to that server, you can monitor and look for, again, these requests here. Um, this is that, again, that RPC endpoint that we talked about, and then being able to um, execute um, the processes to get that here. So you can see some examples from that threat that we captured of where this is going to hit as well. I want to also highlight, again, we've talked about evergreen techniques. So um, you have some good generic detections, um, shells spawned by web servers and shells spawned by Java. Two prime examples, um, again, very comprehensive, but really at the end of the day, what we're looking for is anytime you know, Java or IIS or Tomcat or some other thing is spawning a binary that it shouldn't be doing. Um, you know, people always rush and it's like, oh no, I've got this new you know, CVE that allows remote code execution. You know, do I have any way to detect this? And again, if you've got some of these you know, evergreen detections in here, you're going to be covered um, time and time again. And that's one of the things that we want to highlight both here on our threat snapshots as well as adversary arsenal is that, you know, sometimes keeping up with the latest threats is as easy as having that good backlog of those evergreen detections. Let's also move on. We'll cover one more vulnerability right now in the snapshot. I do want to talk a little bit about the Cisco IOS vulnerability. So um, this is really targeting um, network infrastructure. So your routers, your switches, um, this is a, again, bug where you can um, get access, you know, very elevated access into these interfaces. And then you can um, actually use that to take over the device. You can install, you know, a malicious backdoor. Um, in this case, Cisco saw that there were um, threat actors installing implants to this. And I think, spoiler alert, if you don't know, um, a lot of nation state threat actors particularly like to target network devices like Cisco, you know, routers and switches. Because again, you're not going to have EDR, you're not going to have other data on there. There's not monitoring tools, there's not antivirus for your network devices. So again, if you can get on that device, it's a lot you know, harder to actually defend against that. Similar thing when you see you know, VMware or other you know, servers like that. Again, they're, they're smaller, they're hardened, um, but they don't have a lot of monitoring tools there. So it's very important that you have good defenses outside of that device. It's good, very important that you are you know, pulling logs off of those devices that you can monitor. So we'll talk a little bit about some strategies here um, on how we could defend against this sort of attack. So again, this is another CVE that we have. We can um, see some of the Mandiant data here. You know, we can see some of the threat actors that are using this. This was a zero day exploited in the wild. Um, this is also part of CIS's known exploited vulnerabilities catalog. So the recommendation is to patch. But what happens if, you know, I can't patch all my devices or I think I patched them all and I missed a couple? Again, that's where having some detections in your arsenal are a good opportunity. And again, this is one of those things where we're not going to have a threat here because this is a network device, but we can provide detections and you're going to see two of them in the platform. So. Eight days ago, right when this was coming out, our threat research team put together um, you know, this detection for Cisco IOS implant activity. 
You can see as of about three hours ago, we just pulled in one from the Sigma community repo. Again, another one here. So again, that Delta where we provide an advantage where again, our team is continuously looking for, you know, high risk, high impact vulnerabilities and making sure that our customers are covered. Um, so if that's something that's important to you, that's another reason to look at snap attack, but let's talk at, at two of those detection strategies here. So the detection that we wrote um, back when this came out was um, again, a network detection. So again, if you've got pro Zeek data, being able to monitor for those requests here to that um, web UI where again, that vulnerability lies, specifically looking at some of the parameters that menu and login hash that are um, affected here in this uh, execution attempt. So this is a good detection strategy here. Um, that you can use. The other one that we'll talk through very quickly, um, this one was also just released into the Sigma repo. Um, again, another good strategy here. So if you are pulling off um, you know, your Cisco syslogs, and you can see here, this one is a Cisco syslog, um, putting those into your SIM, um, you could look for evidence based on those here of this exploitation activity. So that's another good um, way of looking at this because again these devices they're they're not going to be able to install other monitoring tools and you're not going to be protected otherwise so um, two great options for monitoring your defenses and anyways yeah so that is our threat snapshot for this week um, again this is a, a weekly series whether it's the threat snapshots or adversary arsenals so stay tuned to the channel and hopefully you'll enjoy some of the different perspectives like subscribe and we'll see you next time